Okay, minasang kung ito ay samurai in your days. So let's start with the discussion of the next topic, which is water pressure versus water flow. And before we begin, let me confirm if my sound is clear enough. So please confirm, somebody from the group. Okay. Thank you for confirmation. Clear po, sir. Okay. So, let's proceed with the short video in clarifying what is the difference between water flow and water pressure. There are two technical terms here, pressure and flow. So, as uh, we already know from uh, several uh, topics, from several engineering discussion, what can we say about pressure and flow? And uh, we will include, because uh, we are uh, engineering utilities, we will use pressure and flow in, for example, water supply. Okay? Pro provision for uh, safe use of water supply, safe and potable use. Okay? Water flow and pressure are often confused. Okay? That's why we have uh, videos like this in order to clarify and uh, clearly state the difference between pressure and flow. Okay? Water flow is the amount of water you can get from a full water pipe. Okay? So flow. So when we say flow, the word flow meaning it is uh, moving the the water particles, the water elements, the, mo the water molecules are moving, okay, from one point to another. So, in our thumbnail, we have what? We have uh, water flowing, coming out, water coming out from the faucet, going to the sink, okay? So, and because of that, there is a water motion, movement, from the pipe, passing through the faucet and finally uh, used by the homeowner for example okay, cleaning something or uh, using for food preparation using for cooking okay? okay so flowing through that and finally ending up to the sink Okay. There is a provision in the sink that uh, allows us for the efficient way of, of discharging those used water. So we already have the used water after using it to clean the food, to clean the, uh, for example, vegetable, fishes, meat, okay, before cooking. So those uh, water that is used to clean those things are now used and uh, we have uh, an efficient way to discharge those water going out from our uh, occupancy from our house from our uh, residential unit into a what uh, into a proper proper uh, proper area okay Usually, that is the ideal situation. We have to discharge this properly. However, uh, in our uh, country, most of us would discharge it to what canal to the to the immediate uh, to the immediate uh, vicinity. No, within the vicinity, we have what the sewer. So, we'll just uh, discharge it as simple as that. Okay? And because of that, uh, there, is a risk, there is a risk of uh, health and uh, uh, disease, no? health and disease issues. Okay? And uh, because we are uh, usually doing it, uh, the... Uh, the occurrence of 
sickness, the cause of disease, is not uh, very much or is not well studied in our country. We do not know. We do not have the data. How much of the population get sick year to year huh? uh, with respect to this uh, type of discharge of water? Because the water discharge is not proper. The proper way is actually uh, discharging properly the used water because they are dirty water. We have to clean those water before it is uh, being discharged. So there is a what? Treatment, water treatment. Okay. So and uh, those water treatment are being applied only for what? Industrial companies or commercial companies, but not for residential companies, which is one of the major users of water. Okay. So residential areas, residential homeowners are the most, one of the most, uh, uh, or the number one user of water. Okay. Uh, so we do not have problem in industrial companies, we do not have problem in commercial because those sanitation law, sanitation code are being followed cleaning the dirty water for example industrial company they will what introduce uh, toxic elements into the water system because of they are not cleaning food they are cleaning for example equipment they are cleaning uh, devices that may involve toxic material so therefore afterwards the water will uh, be toxic materials Okay, so we have to measure the toxicity and clean this uh, dirty water to be able to discharge it on the natural uh, system. Uh, at canal, go into the rivers and so on. So that is the natural end point of the discharge water. Rivers, bodies of water. So that is what we mean by flow. So the water is flowing from different points at different times okay? so we could only imagine it starting from from our faucet but actually it started from rain for example going to what collected being collected in a dam okay? we have water dam and then the water uh, utility company will distribute the water for example in our area we have what the water utility company distributing to us the water using pipelines using pipes using plastic pipes okay and then that is the way we are uh, getting water out from our faucet okay so from our faucet then uh, being utilized being used washing something washing cars and so on. washing uh, the floor washing anything okay and then uh, having those uh, dirty water go back to uh, to the uh, natural uh, reservoir or uh, rivers bodies of water that is supposed to be the ideal situation. Okay, so from an uh, industrial company, they will uh, treat the water up to a certain level. There is a minimum level that is uh, allowed for them to be uh, measured. For example, the toxicity level. There are measurements. Okay. So, the harmful elements, the harmful chemical, measurement. Same is true, supposed to be with our residential area. However, uh, the law is not being applied right now in uh, residences. That's why, for example, if you are in the residential area, but you are using, for example, welding machine, you are using uh, chemical elements, into your, uh, for example, publication work, you have a small publication shop, okay? repair of your own vehicle, for example, okay? oil, 
from the what from the cleaning of of engine okay okay so fuel those uh, types of chemicals will will mix up with water and uh, will just be returned to the canal and that is not the ideal situation that is uh, actually prohibited by sanitation code of the philippines however we are not being uh, a law-abiding citizen i don't uh, i don't think that is the right word that is because that is culturally the way it is that's why it is not uh, being uh, enforced on uh, the residential area that's why we think that that is the right way however when we are uh, talking about engineering proper engineering system would uh, lead us to uh, utilization of water treatment system so there are several water treatment stages primary secondary tertiary so uh, the only water treatment that uh, we provide for example to be able for us to keep the continuous supply of potable water for drinking the water utility companies uses chlorine they pour in an exact uh, percentage of chlorine per uh, volume of water so that what is the purpose of chlorine for uh, for the bacteria okay that is the countermeasure for the bacteria so that even though uh, the uh, water will not be 100 percent clean it is uh, always safe to drink because only negligible amount of bacteria is present okay we cannot uh, we cannot we cannot have a 100 percent uh, ideally clean water or zero percent bacteria you cannot do that we can only measure a very small amount of bacteria negligible amount so that uh, we can say that it is now safe to drink okay? so that is uh, what they are doing in uh, a water utility company do not expect 100 percent or zero bacteria in your water Okay. They are only clean by use of chlorine okay? uh, in order for the majority, 99 point something, okay? for example, I think 95% is uh, good enough, okay? I think. But there is a specific order from the uh, Department of uh, Environment and Natural Resources. What is the exact uh, acceptable level of uh, allowed percentage for bacteria okay. so they are testing they are testing our water before it is being distributed that is the way it is right now uh, that is with respect to the flow and what about water pressure water pressure is not flowing that is not moving that is static water pressure is not moving but pressure is being felt you will experience pressure okay you will experience experience pressure although it is not moving for example uh, you can lie down flat on your uh, back and then put on one one uh, engineering book okay over your chest okay put one engineering book over your chest you will feel the pressure of one book if you put 10 more so now you have 11 engineering books okay, on your chest okay, while, while you are lying down you will feel that the pressure is greater if you compare it when you are just supporting one engineering book so 1 versus 11 you can uh, clearly see the difference you will feel the pressure Okay? but the book is not moving the book uh, the books are uh, only uh, on top of your chest okay? so that is what we mean by pressure pressure is not moving but you can feel it 
And if there is no pressure, you cannot feel anything. You cannot feel the, for example, the pain, okay? the difficulty in breathing. If you compare uh, without book, just lying flat on your back, uh, you are what? Entirely uh, resting. Okay? You are just resting. But if you put 11 books on top of your chest, you will feel that you have difficulty breathing. Okay? And because of that, uh, feeling of pressure, the difficulty of breathing, actually has an associated, has, has an associated physical phenomena. If you can just, uh, if you can just what? If you can just borrow a uh, blood pressure equipment measuring device. For example, you have what? A relative which is nurse. They have what? A stethoscope and what? Blood pressure measuring device. So, lay flat on your back and then measure your uh, blood pressure. Then after measuring, lay flat again on your back and then put 11 engineering books in on top of your chest and then while doing that measure your blood pressure and you will you will uh, be able to compare that you will be able to compare that the blood pressure will change because initially you are just lying flat resting on your own without pressure without pressure okay but afterwards you are feeling pressure in your blood pressure will reflect that okay so what happened is that uh, that is the measurement of actually the pressure in the same manner when we are uh, talking about water pressure we can uh, put actually a uh, uh, pressure gauge, okay? We can put a uh, pressure gauge on our uh, pipeline and then uh, the pressure gauge will measure the pressure of water. But we will not uh, do that in our uh, residential area because a water uh, pressure uh, uh, gauge is uh, costly and uh, we do not need to measure it anyway what for we do not need to know that the pressure is 40 psi or 60 psi we don't need to know we just need the water supply right and actually the water will flow in order to supply us the water because of the pressure without pressure the water will not flow the same is true with our blood okay so our uh, blood pressure will uh, increase because of the, the pressure that we are feeling. Okay. So and uh, that pressure will increase our what? blood flow. So the same is true with this. No? So without uh, the pressure, okay, there is no water flow. Okay, there is no water flow. We are putting therefore a water tank in a higher place. We are putting a water tank in a higher place in order for the for the water to flow. There is no flow if uh, the water is from the lower level going out, going up. Okay, I am talking about natural flow, a natural flow. We can make the water flow from lower level to going up by use of water pump. But naturally, without water pump, that is not that is not going to happen. So natural way is to construct a water tank in a higher place, probably in the roofing, the roof section, so that the water will just what flow going down okay so therefore putting the water in the water tank and placing it in a higher place 
that means we are actually increasing the pressure water. That is the equivalent. If you put the water in a water tank and raise it to a level, okay, above the level of the water discharge, which are the faucet, okay, we are actually, in engineering perspective, we are increasing the pressure of water. Okay? We are increasing the pressure of water. If you cannot do it because of some reason, then instead of that natural tendency of water to flow from higher ground to low, you have to use water pump. And the function of water pump is to increase the pressure in the same manner that you are increasing the water pressure when you put or place the water tank on the higher place. Okay, and that is the function of uh, water pump. Okay, so therefore you don't need to place the water tank in a higher place. You can even dig uh, a well or, for example, a storage water reservoir, digging a water reservoir and place a water pump in order to discharge water going up. Okay. Uh, but uh, going up to the point of use. So that means that is actually the technical uh, explanation of what is pressure. It could be natural by you are increasing the pressure so that the water will flow naturally. Or you can uh, utilize engineering uh, method using machine specifically water pump so that the water pump would increase the pressure and therefore would be able to discharge water okay so you can be able to move the molecules of water the particles of water from a lower ground to to the point of use. Okay. So moving therefore meaning flow. So there is an interrelationship therefore between pressure and flow with that regard. So we cannot have a flow if there is no pressure. Okay. Imagine uh, there is a water tank that is uh, on the same level of your what faucet. Okay. So the water tank, the level of water is here, and the faucet is here, the same level. There is no water that will flow because they are on the same level. Okay? Do not expect water to come out from the faucet, even if you open the faucet 100%. Okay? They are on the same level. But if you will just increase the level of water inside the water tank, Oh, there is a flow. Okay. So now uh, it is now uh, understood, and the ideal water pressure is actually 40 to 60 pounds psi, uh, pounds per square inch. Okay. Ideally, so you can uh, have what 15, you can have actually 7 psi, and they are good enough 7, 15, and then 30, 40, 60. So, even a 7, 7 PSA is uh, good enough, but when we are talking of ideal situation, 40, 40 to 60 PSA. So, this amount of water pressure, 40 or 60 PSA, those, those type of pressure of water, uh, can be used as, as a firefighting type of water pressure. We can use it for firefighting because of the pressure. The flow of water is uh, so great that the water can be discharged at longer distances. Okay? Coming out from the faucet, the water discharge will be able to be uh, at uh, 5 meters, 10 meters, even 10 meters. If you have what? 60 psi. If you have uh, 60 psi, 10 meters. Discharge of water is possible. 
starting from the what uh, the nasal okay so the nasal is the what poset so so the nasal will uh, discharge water and the water would be discharged at greater and greater distances when your pressure is increasing as your pressure increases the water discharge length okay will be also uh, longer and longer okay <clears throat> You can achieve more flow in larger pipe, okay? So, because the flow is the amount of water. We are talking of amount of water. How much water is being discharged per minute? You need more water discharge per minute if, uh, if for example, you are uh, using the water to put up a pile. Okay. If you are using water to put up a fire, you need more water if the fire is now uh, big. So a bigger uh, amount of, of fire would need a, big, a large amount of water. Okay. Imagine if there is a big amount of fire and you have very small volume of water. So therefore, we will use what? A larger pipe. So in, in a fire fighting, there are... Uh, about three or four for different size of hose, hose and nacer okay, fine. so the uh, larger the hose the larger the nacer meaning the the ability of them to discharge more water is uh, greater and therefore they can be used for larger occurrence of fire but in our case we are just using water for uh, domestic domestic use okay so for domestic use we do not need a lot of water pressure we do not need a lot of water volume however if you would like to compare that is the comparison between water flow and water pressure for example residential area we do not need to wa too much water pressure too much water flow however you are at the what the ported floor if you are uh, at the ported floor you can compare your water supply and water flow from up above there versus the water supply and water flow on the ground right on the first floor okay so you you will need a lot of pressure of water when you are on the ported floor we are in the ported floor you will need so much uh, pressure water in order for the water to come up there okay but just the same you just need the same amount of flow as the one living on the ground on the first floor for example one family made up of five persons in one family living on the ground or the first floor and on the port ported floor yeah, most possibly they have what the same amount of water supply demand the amount of water is the same but the amount of water pressure is not because one is on the ground and one is on the ported floor okay so most pa probably you will need water pump when you are staying on the ported floor okay it depends you will need water pump if there is not enough amount of pressure okay uh, what you need to do is measure the water pressure at that level so you don't need to to insert a water gauge water pressure gauge on that floor you just need to uh, to ask the services of what uh, master plumber and they have what we have uh, tools to measure they have uh, tools to measure pressure and then uh, advise you for example uh, they are able to measure 7 psi they are able to measure 10 psi and they will advise you 
with respect to the demand in your uh, unit okay. how much pressure your uh, unit demands so there is a what there is a design there is a design process okay. Okay, with respect to that so so there is no better way when we are uh, civil engineers we can compare pressure and flow of water as the same with with vehicle for example water is to vehicle water is to car okay? and therefore pressure is to uh, engine force no? engine force then then uh, flow is to velocity okay so flow is the velocity of the car okay pressure is the the uh, strength of the engine okay by the energy of the engine okay so we need the energy and uh, strength of the engine in order for the car to move the movement is the velocity okay velocity so the uh, velocity is to the flow so water is to car now is it clear therefore velocity is uh, very much different from from uh, force engine force velocity is much different okay so that is uh, how we can clearly and distinctly um, learn the difference between uh, pressure and flow okay so water pressure is primarily primarily a function of force that's why we can we can think of it as engine force the amount of force that the engine could provide you can see that there are bigger cars and there are smaller cars bigger cars also have big engines okay so big engines would be able to force the car to move uh, strong strongly stronger than a smaller car okay uh, that is uh, what we mean the force okay so behind the water at it enters the piping system so the force of the water as the water enters the piping system okay. a system with too little water pressure may not provide sufficient water flow when multiple supply fixtures are being used okay okay so multiply supply fixture what do we mean by multiply multiple supply fixture fixture are the load if you have a car the load of the car is what the passengers okay if there are uh, plenty of passengers for example 20 passengers it is a very different matter when the car only has one passenger okay that is the load fixture is a load okay fixture is a load so the more load in our system or the more passenger in our car the larger the car must be okay or the larger the engine must be okay because the the size of the car is actually corresponding to the size of the engine okay imagine the engine of the, the bus the engine of the bus is very much larger than the engine of a car because the passenger expected in a bus is about 60 to 70 passengers while for a car about uh, 3 to 5 passengers okay so meaning to say if we have multiple supply fixture if we have multiple passengers okay we need sufficient amount of water pressure we need a bigger vehicle we need a bigger engine do we follow do we follow can we follow the line of thought okay 
Can we follow the line of thought? And the speed of the bus or the speed of the vehicle, that is the flow. Okay? And that is a different matter. That is a different matter because if you want to go to another city, from one city to another, it doesn't matter the amount of flow. It doesn't ama matter how how fast the vehicle or the bus uh, would uh, actually don't matter as long as your goal is to move from one place to another. But if your goal is to go to that place faster or at a certain time, because for example, you are a student, you need to go to class before uh, 5 o'clock, or there is a time limit, therefore you need it faster. Okay? But if uh, the time is not uh, material, okay? uh, you can uh, ride a vehicle which is too slow but will, will uh, satisfy the goal. For example, after three days. After three days, it will arrive. Okay? Compared to another vehicle which uh, would arrive there one hour after. So... We can what compare the difference between speed and that is the flow. So whenever you have a goal that is with respect to time, you want faster flow, then it would matter. But uh, if you don't need faster, however, in our uh, normal demand for water in our uh, residential area, we need sufficient amount of flow. Okay. Okay, for example, uh, there is a range of demand. For example, if you are taking a shower and the flow is droplets, of course, you will have what? You will collect a sufficient amount of water for taking a bath, even if it is droplets. But how long? Three months? Okay? No. No. That is not acceptable. We want to take a bath within 10 minutes. Okay? And therefore, we have the requirement for flow water. So the requirement for flow, water flow is different from requirement for pressure. Okay? Do we follow? Do we follow the difference? Okay? So that is because there is a time factor okay we need to take a bath within 10 minutes we don't need to take a bath for three months giving us droplets of water and uh, you are saying please take a bath only droplets of water okay so it is not acceptable so that's why we need water flow sufficient for domestic use okay so the target the target for design for construction uh, is 40 psi okay so that is the size of the bus or the size of the car 40 psi okay minimum to both public and private okay and do not exceed 80 psi. Why? Why? You only have what? Five person and you need you need a train? You will buy a train for five person. You just need to buy a car if there are only five person. So, okay? So, 80 psi is so large. 80 psi water pressure is so large that uh, in domestic application it is too much okay it is too much we are allowed to use uh, what uh, jeepney to use bus for five person but buying an entire train buying an entire train for five person is, is too much no? okay so that is what we mean by number two do not exceed 80 psi number three Install an approved pressure reducing valve at the main water supply 
connection to the dwelling if the static pressure exceeds the maximum. Okay. So, that is for controlling the water pressure. Okay. So, if the engine is too large, it will pose danger. Ready. Imagine the how large is the engine of the train compared to the engine of the car. Okay. The engine of the train is so large. So, because it is large enough, it is what dangerous. It is posing risk. Okay. On the safety of our occupants. Okay. So, what happens if uh, something breaks down in the engine? Okay. It will cause injury. It will cause uh, even death. Okay. The same is true with what? With our water. If the pressure is too high, the water pressure will break the pipe. And after breaking the pipe, it will burst. Bursting the pipe will will uh, will uh, sometimes result in injuries. Okay, bursting of pipe. There are several actual instances within, I think, the the nearby NCR provinces. There are actual. But uh, injuries that happen. Water tank of a community. Community water tank is so big and then the water tank burst. Okay? There are several persons injured and sometimes uh, there are one or two persons die. Now, there are several instances already in our story. I don't know if uh, there is a government agency who collects the statistic or uh, information about this, but you can just search online the specific uh, no, uh, bursting of tank, for example. Okay. That's why we need to what, control the maximum okay, pressure. Measure the water pressure to the point where the water supply enters the building as close as possible. So, I mean to say, as it enters the premises, we can what? Uh, we can insert a measuring device just to allow us the possibility of having the control and extra provision for safety. So, when the pressure is too much and we cannot do anything about it, so we will have what? Uh, precaution, precautionary measure to counter, to counter up or request, request the utility company to uh, pipe down their, their uh, water pressure. Minimum flow rates. So, now we will talk flow rates. So, there are three important things on pressure. Now, there we have what? Provide at least water flow rate. So, we have table for different uh, fixtures. Water flow rate is measured in gallons per minute. So, in every fixture, we have a table. Fixture meaning load. Load meaning passengers. Right? So, as the number of passengers increases, so if there are uh, one fixture, one passenger, if there are 20 fixtures, 20 passengers. So remember that. Okay? So water flow rate means the water flow from pipe without the fixture attacks. Okay? So water flow rate in the table, that does mean that the water flow from the fixture must be at least the amount in the table. Some fixtures contain required flow restrictors that will limit the actual water flow from the fixture to less than the water flow rate in the table. Example, minimum water flow rate for a shower is 3 gallons per minute. Take note of that. You can actually memorize that. 3 gallons per minute. We do not accept droplets in a shower. It will take us 3 months. Okay? We need 3 gallons per minute in order for us to be able to take a bath within 5 to 10 minutes. 10 minutes is too long for a shower. 
so three to five minutes okay okay because we have what plenty of water three gallons per minute okay three gallons per minute okay so but the maximum flow restricted rate from the shower head is 2.5 gallons per minute so flow restricted rate okay so the supply can provide 3 gallons per minute but the actual because there is what the nozzle the the shower head the shower head is the faucet of the shower okay the shower head restrictor is 2.5 gallons per minute so it is good to provide 3 but just 2.5 rather than provide 2.5 and just 3 that is not impossible okay okay so we don't need to provide too much amount of water when we only need 2.5 gallons per minute okay so please take note also of the conversion what conversion factor we need in converting gallons to liters how many liters are there in one gallon okay how many liters about three about three point three point seventy eight i think can you confirm that can anybody confirm that three point seventy eight gallons per uh, liters per gallon okay so times 2.5 of that so that is the amount of water so 2.5 2.5 times 3.78 so we need what almost 10 about 10 so we need about 10 liters per minute so 10 liters per minute for shower alone so that is uh, only for shower for faucet greater amount is probably needed probably needed because uh, we are not just taking a shower when we are just taking a shower it, we are in the relax, relax mode cleaning ourselves okay but when we are washing for example cars we need extra amount of water okay so we will uh, take a look at the table for that matter but before that remember the table 29 we have what also the maximum flow rate at fixture so use fixture that allow water flow rate that is not more than the flow rate in table 30 so we need also to regulate or to control the maximum so maximum for pressure is 80 okay maximum for water flow rate is let us look at the table okay so we need to take note of those maximum however in our country we are uh, actually nearing the minimum okay so it is a uh, safe most of the time okay most of the time uh, our uh, parameters is uh, near minimum than maximum okay so we are uh, taking care of the maximum control of uh, water pressure and flow because of safety okay we want the safe use of water Okay, so let us uh, go to the table. This is the fixture water flow rate. Okay, gallons per minute. Okay. Oh, you will notice shower 2.5. For shower 2.5. For bathtub 4. Okay. So we need larger amount of water for bathtub compared to uh, oh, as you can see horse beef is pipe 
Okay? Double of shower, no? Shower 2.5 plus bib 5. Oh. Take note. Because host bib, uh, you will carry the host bib, for example, for cleaning your car. So, we need more flow rate. That's why we need, what, 5 uh, gallons per minute. So, 5 gallons per minute is about 20. No? So, 2.5 is about 10. So, this is about 20 liters per minute. 1 minute. No? 1 minute is 60 seconds. Okay. So, meaning to say, 10 liters per, per minute, that means... Uh, one liter per uh, six minutes for every six minutes one liter okay? uh, rather for every six seconds to be able to have a 10, 10 liters per minute that is one liter per six seconds every six seconds one liter okay? here okay? one liter per every three seconds <laughs> one liter for every three seconds okay uh, and you have what this one is one liter this is one liter one liter so one liter for every six seconds so this amount of water for every six seconds you can use as shower okay in in whose beam for every three seconds. Yes. One liter for every three seconds. For whose beam? Okay. What else? Sink. So sink. Dishwasher. So dishwasher is uh, almost the same with shower. Okay. 2.75 gallon. Okay. Okay. So... 2.75 gallons, we can what? compute. Let us compute. This is how many liters? 10.4. No? 2.75 is 10.4. So we can say that shower is 9.5. This is 10.5. Okay? 9.5, 10.5. Okay? Shower 9.5. This was a 10.5. Okay. For, uh, no, for easy recall, no? Okay. That is not exact. That is not exact computation. But to be able for us to be easily remember these values. Okay. This was a okay. laundry. Take note of laundry, bathtub. They are the same and just a little bit, a little bit smaller than who's big. Okay? No. No, these are the requirement. These are the passengers. So what do we need to compare? Why the passengers require different amount of water flow? Because there are passengers that are Chubby. There are passengers that are normally built. There are passengers that are thin or sexy. There are passengers that are big, huge. Huh? Okay, so these are the comparison of the different passengers. So, which one is the biggest? The biggest is who's big? That is the passenger that is uh, fat. Okay, so what are the passengers that are chubby? Laundry tub and bathtub. They are a chubby. What are the normal types of passengers? Dishwasher, shower. Okay. And then, sexy. Okay. Bidet. Okay. And sink. And what about this one? It's not only sexy. They, they are what? thin. They are so thin. Petit. They are petit. No? They are so thin. Lavatory. So, lavatory is just for washing hands. Okay? So, there are uh, different load characteristics. 
Okay. So next is the table for table for maximum. What is the maximum? Laboratory 2.2 gallons per minute. Shower head 2.5 gallons per minute. Sink 2.2 gallons per minute. So 2.2 to 2.5, no? 2.2 to 2.5 and we have 60 psi to 80 psi. That those are maximum. Okay? Descent pressure is 60 psi. Descent pressure per shower is 80 psi. Oh, that is what we mean by this. Okay? So, please uh, remember the maximum. So, 2.5 is about uh, what? 9.5. 2.5 is 9.5 liters per minute. Okay? What about 2.2? So, let us compute 2.2. 2.2 is... How much? How much 2.2? 8.3. 8 so we can say 8.5. No? So 8.5, 9.5, 10.5. So those are our... So, okay, 8.3. So, so we can just say 8.5 liters per minute. Okay? So meaning to say, plumbing design is not guess work. They are not arbitrary. Arbitrary. There is a specific design uh, procedure, okay? okay, so that we will be able to present an engineering plan or a plumbing plan. Okay, so that is what we mean by this. So common water distribution pipes. Okay, number one. Uh, install water service pipe that has working pressure rating of at least 160 psi. Oh, this is very large. We have maximum 60, 80. We have actually maximum 80. 80 psi is the maximum. Okay. What is the equivalent of 80 psi in, in MPA? Okay. Please convert. 60 psi or is the equivalent of 60 psi in MPA. So those are our unit given in our country so, at 73 degrees Fahrenheit. So we can also convert that. So I will uh, get my Excel conversion program. Okay, so I have the Excel conversion program. So that uh, I can easily convert from one unit to another. You can do it also. You can have an Excel. Excel program for what? Temperature for uh, what? So for pressure, for flow. And then while I am opening it, it's a. Uh, let us go to number uh, number two. The only thing that we need to remember in number one is the but uh, service pipe. This is what we call service pipe. Okay. The this is not the pressure of the water, but this is the capacity of the pipe. 160 is the capacity of the pipe. Okay, take note. 80 is the maximum. The capacity of pipe is double, so the pipe will not burst because it is sufficient in capacity at 73 degrees Fahrenheit or the highest available pressure whichever is greater okay number two common water distribution pipe materials used in modern residential construction so we can use those things and then number three you may use other approved materials if allowed by local codes what are those copper 
CPBC, PEX are the most common water distribution pipes. Okay. I think uh, I already have this Fahrenheit to Celsius. So if you have what, 70, 73 Fahrenheit? So, 73 Fahrenheit. <coughs> 73 Fahrenheit is about... Uh, 68 is about 20. So, 73 is... is about 24. About 23 or 24 degrees Celsius. Okay. So that is uh, the Fahrenheit. What about 60? 60 psi is 60 psi is a point four point four megapascal. Okay. 80 psi is about 0.5 megapascal. So, those are the values. Okay. So, 22.78 degrees Celsius. Oh, so 80 psi, 0.55. So, okay. So, my... Uh, my guess estimate is relatively okay. okay. So, 22.8 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, let's uh, take a look. If we have pictures here, we have the pictures of copper, copper pipe, CPB, uh, CPBC. PBC is the old one. We have CPBC, new one and PX so PX are quite what? flexible PX quite flexible but uh, they are expensive they are very expensive they are flexible blue for uh, cold red for hot okay. okay so common water distribution pipe materials approved for use under concrete slab okay so we are very much interested in here because we are civil engineer we will design a concrete slab cpbc approved for concrete slab copper copper alloy approved for use under concrete slab copper tubing minimum type m only type m is approved for concrete slab px al px pipe yes px tubing yes pe al pe pipe yes so mostly approved for concrete slab because they are new materials only copper and copper alloy are not new, they are old. Okay. These are new types of material. The old one is PBC. We have CPBC. The new one. Okay. So they are approved for concrete slab application. Okay. So, we have pittings. So, pittings are the components that would connect the fixture to the pipings. They can also be used to connect piping to piping. So, those are the pittings application. 
it can be used to connect one size of piping to a different size of piping. So those are some of the uh, application of fittings. So PVC and CPVC T. So these are a type PVC and CPVC. Okay. So we have what elbow coupling. So we have T. This one T T elbow and coupling. Okay. And letter B copper T's and elbows. So letter B copper. These are the copper. One, two, three. Four. Yeah. These are the copper. T's. These are coupling. One, two, three, four. Coupling. Coupling. Elbow. One, two. T. One, two, three. These are the copper. So you can immediately spot the color of copper because it is uh, reddish. Reddish in color. Okay. Letter C. Brass. Compression fitting. So letter C. These are the brass. So brass fittings are uh, more yellowish than reddish. Okay? So you can uh, take note of the difference. And letter D, brass fittings with barbs. Okay, these are the barbs. Okay. Okay. So what are distribution pipe joints and connections? These fittings made from the same material is the pipe when connecting pipes made from same material. It is better to use uniformly same material so that we don't have problem in what? Fittings, we don't have problem in material reaction. Some materials will react to another material. Okay? Particularly metals. Metals react to other metals. Okay? Particularly in the presence of water. So, and oxygen in the presence of oxygen and water metals react okay so that's why we need a uniform use of material if possible okay? use solder or bracing to connect one from the other okay you can use cement to connect pvc okay we are using cement primer to connect cpvc number two Use flared fittings. What do you mean by flared? There is no example of flared here. I will show you later what do you mean by flared fittings. Okay. Uh, I don't have a picture here. There is no flared fittings out of these plenty of example pictures. Okay. Between soft copper water tubing and bulbs and fixture. Use approved fittings and flaring tool. So, how to make flared fittings? You can do it yourself by having flaring tool to form and connect these joints. Okay? And number three, use fittings and crimping tools approved by tubing manufacturer when connecting PEX. So, crimping and other plastic water materials to each other. Most uh, of us should not attempt to install PEX and similar material using these fittings and tools because this requires training and experience and also these devices and equipments are very expensive mechanical fittings are uh, recommended for homeowners okay number four you may uh, use mechanical fittings to connect uh, pipes from the same materials and pipes made from different materials okay? Flexible water connectors. So flexible, usually CPVC and PX. Okay. Example of proper use of flexible water connectors. Connecting water supply pipes and water heater. We need flexible because of the stress due to difference in temperature. The material will be uh, in continuous stress. Okay. So because of the stress, it will fail after several cycles of temper temperature up and downs. Okay. Connecting a refrigerator, ice maker, and a valve. So we need flexible flexibility connecting a valve deposit. So there is some 
specific concept and we can actually measure it we can actually compute it the uh, stress and the pressure given up due to difference in temperature number two use a flexible water connector this uh, is approved for application example do not choose a connector intended for a clothes washing machine to connect uh, to connect a water heater to the hot water supply okay because washing machine will uh, uh, will be uh, damaged due to uh, that is not designed for high temperature that's why it will be damaged physically physically it will be damaged and therefore it will just cause troubles later on recurring troubles if you uh, keep on doing it three do not run flexible water connectors through walls ceilings and floors and concealed spaces okay flexible water connectors we did not say water pipe flexible water pipe but we said flexible connectors okay do not run flexible water connectors through walls so actually we need fixed connectors when we are um, using it through walls and concealed spaces we can use flexible pipes but not connectors and number four do not use flexible water connectors as a substitute for permanent water supply pipe okay so if ever you will have the permanent water supply lines so throughout those lines from the supply to the point of application we have to do it permanently permanent pipes okay? not flexible okay? so these are the pictures of different types so we have uh, copper we have uh, cpvc we have hot pex we have co ah, this is the px this is cpvc hot cpv ah, this is px this is px blue for cold cold water supply okay use fittings made from uh, same materials as the pipe is the least expensive way to connect pipes okay so we have what fittings so these are the function of fittings in order to connect one pipe to the other one type of pipe to the other type of pipe one size of pipe to another size of pipe okay um, this is what we call fittings or um, geometric types of fittings like T elbow okay, Y those are types of fittings that uh, we usually come across with same as much as possible same type of material use mechanical fittings is a good a way for homeowners to connect different pipes uh, to connect pipes of the same material together flexible flexible pipe these are flexible okay. so flexible 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 okay. Using flexible water connectors according to manufacturer's instructions, avoid using plastic tubings. This material can burst and may cause significant water damage. So, DWB. What do you mean by DWB? Drain waste vent. Drain waste vent pipes. Okay? Drain waste vent water supply drain waste bin. so these are the two systems that we install or we plan we draw in the plumbing plan okay so these are the plumbing pipe support and pipes okay abs pipe material 
Okay? Okay. Maximum horizontal spacing, 48. In chess, maximum vertical spacing, 120. Pipe support, we are talking about pipe support. Maximum, 4 feet. Vertical, maximum, 120. 120 is 10 feet. Okay. Mid story, guide required for pipe diameter. Okay. So we need a guide for pipes smaller or equal to 2 inches because they will what? They will sag. They will be deformed. If uh, there is no guide, they will be deformed. Bigger pipe can stand on its own. For example, 3 inches can stand on its own. 2.5 can stand on its own. Pipe material, cast iron pipe. Horizontal spacing, 60 inches. Maximum vertical spacing, 180. So, if we are using different types of material, expect different uh, property. Of ABS, this is plastic. ABS is plastic. Cast iron is metal. So, you'll notice, maximum 60. Maximum here is... 48 only. Huh? Okay. So, 120. This is 180. Okay. There is no requirement for uh, intermediate support between uh, story. Okay. No need. Because it is metallic. Okay. Metallic. Okay. So, pipe material. Third one. Third one is copper tubing. You take note. 72 this is 80 this is 180 this is 120 okay mid story we don't we don't need support pipe material another this is what one in one port diameter this is copper tubing greater than one in one half equal or greater than one in one the same copper tubing but bigger size horizontal 120 vertical 120 Okay. Next is plastic. CPBC is a plastic material. Take note, 36 inches. Compared to ABS, this is also a plastic. 48. This is 36. So, meaning to say, ABS is stronger. ABS is a stronger material than CPBC. Okay, 36. Oh. 120, 120. Need support, yes. Need support, yes. Okay. So bigger, bigger uh, size CPBC material. Yes, this is bigger, 48. This is the same, 48. Okay, 120, 120 there. Support, yes, yes. Polybutylene, PB, pipe, tubing, polybutylene. You will notice this is the soft test. Soft test material, 36, 32, less than. So, it is weaker. It is weaker than CPBC. The same is true with PX. This is plastic. 32. 32 inches. Maximum horizontal spacing. Okay. So these are the types of piping that we can expect. Or uh, we have to use in our construction. Another uh, material. PX. PX, AL, PX, and PE, AL, PE. 32, 48, need support. Oh, the ordinary, ordinary PVC pipe. 48, 120, need support. Oh, take note. This is the strongest. This is the strongest that we can use. Oh, take note. 144 inches. This is equivalent to 12, 12 feet. Okay, 12 feet horizontal spacing and then uh, 180 feet vertical spacing because it is very strong steel pipe no need for support okay so pipe support the uh, pipe so they, they maintain alignment and will not sag sag meaning it will be deformed like this okay support and install pipe so they can move with the normal expansion we need support if the uh, 
had the normal expansion, so it could be okay because there is a support. Contraction or expansion. Number three, use uh, pipe supports that will carry the weight of the pipe. So we need something support in order to carry not only the pipe but the water inside the pipe. Use pipe support that will not cause corrosion or galvanic reaction between pipe. Okay. So that is what I'm saying previously. We need to use material that will not react to another material. Okay. So some material will react when in touch with another metallic material. Example, do not use steel supports with copper pipe. The uh, copper will be damaged. The copper will be damaged because it is in contact with the steel. The copper will react to steel. Okay? Or copper supports with cast iron pipe. They will react. Okay? So these two very important. Very important. Cast iron and copper. And steel and copper. So copper would react, so therefore copper piping is a, a, a delicate a delicate material, so you need uh, same type of material. Okay. Number five, provide rigid sway bracing at changes in pipe direction more than 45 degrees for pipe sizes at least 4 inches in diameter. Sway bracing. Okay. Uh, prevent sway bracing for uh, lateral loads. Okay. Provide horizontal and vertical support for pipes according to table. So let us uh, horizontal and vertical support. So these are the hangers, support hangers that we can use. So the pipe will be put here. So you can hang it on like this this is the way to connect hangers on your ceilings and then this point okay so you can what put the pipe inside these uh, clamps so that is what we call clamp this is what we call hook we call this as hook we call this as clamp and we call this as hangers these are all hangers okay Okay. Next, support for PX tubing is particularly important near manifolds. So this is because uh, PX tubing is so flexible. So if ever there is a curve, so we need the support like this. Okay. Provide vertical support for pipes running parallel to wall stud. So this is what we call vertical support. Okay vertical support so like this okay so we have copper no? we have copper pipes here copper pipes. <laughs> protect pipes one and a half inches from the edges of studs and joists okay okay so these are the pipes so we need pipe protection one and a half inches from the edges so these are the uh, studs okay? studs one two three so they drill a hole so that the pipe could pass through the studs so, and uh, they need protection so for example there that is the protection okay so from the edge from this point to that point that is one and a half inches it's very long no to take okay okay so also we have the this is not a bare hole they can they can insert a metallic or copper copper guides on the hole you can put in copper guides on the holes okay 
protect plumbing pipes other than um, kasayon seal we call that seal uh, so there is a metallic or copper guides or seal that is seal okay? so also here this is seal plate this, this uh, one is seal plate this is what we call plate also we call this the seal plate Okay. So that, for example, this will be covered with what? With the uh, wall, and then somebody will what? Drill. The plate drill. The first thing to be hit by the drill is the plate before it would hit the two wings. Okay. So that's uh, is another reason for uh, shield plate. Okay. Extend the shield plate at least two inches below top plate and at least two inches above top plate. So, so take note of this. So this is about five inches, two inches, two inches below in top. So one inch, so about five inches total. Use shield plates at least one over sixteen inch thick. One over sixteen that is one point six mm. All right, one point six mm thickness here. Okay. Okay. Apply these rules to pipes running through holes and not just so holes. These are holes. Okay, we can uh, show you an example of nuts later on. Okay, so protect copper plumbing pipe from corrosion whether it passes through the masonry or concrete because copper will react with concrete. So we use pipe wrapping material you need to wrap it first before it will uh, pass through the uh, concrete or masonry okay protect gas pipe with shield plate if the pipe is closer than one half. So closer meaning from this point to that point from this point to that point from this point to so from this point to this point okay that is what we mean by closer. That is for gas pipe. Okay. Okay. Protecting pipes from freezing. Okay. We need to do that, but in our country, there is no freezing. So we will we will jump from this topic. There is no freezing in our country. So fixture cut the bulb or angle stop. So provide this plumbing fixture except for bathtubs and shower with an accessible cut of bulb we need a cut of bulb okay for fixture for this fixture so that we can stop the water for example we need to have a maintenance work we need to repair okay so we have a cut off for angle stop okay these bulbs are sometimes called angle stop bulbs you may install cut of bulbs at bathtubs and shower but these bulbs are not required so bathtub and shower because they have their own bathtubs and shower they have their own bulb so no need no need to install a separate okay bulbs and outlets uh, installed below ground okay do not install water supply outlets and stop and waste bulbs below ground Okay, that is not acceptable. If ever the piping is below ground, you need to to create a path that would enable the pipe to go over the ground, to go over the return. Okay, that is uh, why you always see what you always see the water meter in your uh, residential area look like this. Okay. Because this pipe can be underground and then go up over the ground, then water meter, then go down to the pipe that could be placed underground. Okay? So that's the reason why we have here. No, that is a requirement. Okay? Then uh, we will what? We will uh, not do the number two because this is freeze proof. We do not need that. Host beep cut of bulb. To buy those beep that are subject to freezing, uh, we do not need freezing. Number two, you need to install a stop and waste 
But oh, we do not need this frost also for winter uh, season. We do not have winter. So these are the so you can see in the picture we have bush beef that are subject to freezing. So we then we do not need this. Okay. So we can immediately have the uh, control bulb here. We don't need an intermediate bulb here. Okay. So foundation wall. So uh, we are not using this because that is for frost and freezing application. Immediately passing through the wall, we have the the hose beep here. Okay. Immediately. Okay, that uh, concludes our uh, particular discussion on uh, water supply and water pressure. So, uh, if we uh, uh, can have any inquiry, question, we are happy to answer those. So, I will give you time to, to uh, type your uh, question on the comment box below. I will wait and while waiting I will uh, summarize what we have discussed. Okay. Uh, we have plenty of discussion starting from this. Okay? So we started discussion on water pressure and flow. Clearly uh, explaining the details as deep as possible as detailed as possible okay the difference between pressure and flow and uh, afterwards we give the the application uh, code provision that we need to learn so for example maximum average uh, pressure, maximum pressure, average flow, maximum flow, okay, the fixture requirement, the fixture flow rate requirement, we have maximum, we have uh, pipe materials, so we have connectors, we have uh, fixture or fittings, we have the pipe materials, how to connect them, what are the regulation okay, what we need to understand from the different perspective of material use it is tabulated according to maximum minimum and the requirement for support and uh, we have how many different materials discussed one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so we discussed eleven different types of system Okay. And then uh, we introduce how to how to install them. We use of hangers, okay? Use of hangers, and, uh, use of uh, support, and different types of material support. Okay? So and the procedure and the important concept that must be understood for each and every uh, activities for example activity of protecting puncturing corrosion protecting pipes okay okay fixture cut of bulb bulb up outlet installation below ground post beep cut of bulb so those are the things that we uh, discuss Again, uh, if there are no uh, questions, so see you uh, next uh, course. We will have 30 minutes break. Again, this is Dr. Ripi, Preaching Engineering for